sellers, come on in, come on in. I'm Kathy and I love to be selling. We are going to talk about why I got it written down. eBay sales slow. One reason, one reason, I actually have a prop. One reason, one reason why they could be slow and how to fix it. That's what I like to do when I'm speaking with you is to point out things like your sales could be slow, um, but then to give you a solution. I will often listen to people um, on videos, on podcasts. And first of all, those of you who listen to me on my Facebook business page, I love to be selling. Thank you. And those of you who listen on my YouTube channel, be sure to hit subscribe. Um, I love to be selling. Thank you so much. And for the many, many, many of you that have downloaded my podcast, I love to be selling. Hi, Vicki. Good to see you. Um, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. But let's talk about um, slow eBay sales. And one thing, one, that it could be about and how to fix it. Because again, I, I was saying is, you know, you'll hear on videos and you're here on podcasts and, you know, people, you know, oh, eBay, oh, eBay, oh, eBay. <laughs> And we can all do that about something, right? I mean, I've been selling over 15 years. Vicki, I know you've been selling for a while. You know, for those of us who have been selling for a while, yeah, there's absolutely stuff that we could be going, oh, eBay, you know, like why? Um, but what I like to focus on is um, when I look at things is what can I do about it? What's doable about this? What's a solution about this? And I've got one uh, tip for you for slow sales that can really, really, really be helpful. So I'm going to actually share my screen with you. So let's do this. So we're on eBay. Okay. And I was doing this. Um, and this, the tip I'm going to give is particularly useful uh, for people that source uh, thrift stores, estate sales. It could be retail too. Uh, but typically I've run into this when I'm at a thrift store or a resale, resale store. And that's when you um, sort of hit the mother load. Um, so I had a, a friend recently who hit a mother load of vintage GI Joe's. You could hit the mother load, but it could be modern things. Like you hit a mother load, um, of Under Armour shirts. They're all new with tags. Um, there's a thrift store that I go to here in New York city and several of the large department stores donate. So sometimes you'll get a specific brand and it's all new with tags. Um, and it's been donated to the thrift store. So all of a sudden you'll get a certain brand new with tags. Um, it can be a style of things. Um, I'm sure this has happened to you again, typically at thrift stores, um, but you'll see it certainly at estate sales is clearly, so I'm going to deal with the thrift store first, clearly somebody with certain taste. So for instance, again, I was at my large thrift store to Salvation Army here in New York, and I came across some great vintage um, men's Hawaiian shirts. And it was like two of them together, both extra large. Um, and it was Paradise Found, which is a great, great brand um, for modern and for vintage Hawaiian shirts. And I'm looking and I'm going, hmm, two same size, same brand, Hawaiian shirts. I bet there's some more really good Hawaiian shirts in there because they're all sort of bunched together. Um, so I really took extra time to go through. And sure enough, there were some more good ones in there. So if you find something, it could be women's cashmere sweaters. It could be, uh, you see several beautiful, let's say like uh, suits from a designer in a thrift store or a consignment store. Always look around when you see two similar, same size is, did somebody go through their closet or like um, clean out a wardrobe? Like it could be for a relative or it could be for you. Um, you know, that somebody has lost weight. Um, maybe somebody put on a few pounds. And so they're donating a bunch of things to get it out of their home. So you'll come across, it'll be women's suits. It'll be women's sweaters. It'll be men's Hawaiian shirts. It could be men's golf shirts or golf equipment, but all of a sudden you'll get a bunch all related. And, and typically what it is, is it's the one individual and they're cleaning out their closet. Um, it could be moving like here in New York, we're very mobile. So people are moving and they're getting rid of a bunch of stuff. Um, you get that sometimes look at Florida. People move to Florida. They come with some winter clothes. They find out, hey, I don't really need these winter clothes. And all of a sudden that's all donated. So keep an eye out for that with thrift stores, consignment stores of, again, if you see one or two things of a certain style, 
uh, two or three things and, and they're all together and like pretty much the same size as, you know what, this person has good taste. This person's stuff is in good shape. Let me see if I can find more that this individual might have donated. And sometimes you hit it and sometimes you don't. But I remember hitting a mother load with Hawaiian shirts. Um, I hit a mother load um, with really nice cardigan sweaters. Somebody had obviously donated a bunch of their cardigan sweaters. You'll get it sometimes with vintage sheets, vintage towels. But again, if you see two or three things very, very similar together, there's a chance that an individual might have donated a collection or cleaned up their closet. So keep an eye out for that. So let's say you have the mother load of vintage GI Joes or teddy bears or Hawaiian shirts, and you're listing them on eBay and you've done your research. So you're on product research. Um, you're searching active listings. You're using eBay's tool product research. You're looking at the sold listings and you've got your keywords for your title. You've got your pictures, your item specifics, everything you list it. And from the work that you did, you know, you're going, you know, this should sell like in maybe two to three months. It should sell maybe in two or three months. And then what happens is it doesn't. So you're going, what is going on? I, that great Hawaiian shirt that I listed, it really should have sold by now. It's perfect for summer cruises, summer barbecues, the GI Joes. I know these are highly collectible. They really should have sold by now. Why haven't they sold? And this is what I want to show you is when I listed it, the GI Joe, the paradise found Hawaiian shirt, the teddy bear. I was the best price. We're going to be talking about price. I was the best price. I was the best price, maybe a little bit higher. Like if you're a seller that has a lot of feedback, maybe you can price a little higher. Um, Mine was really in pristine condition, so I can go a little higher. Maybe I went down a little bit in price because it had a little bit of wear and tear compared to some of the others that sold. I figured somebody will really like this and appreciate saving a few bucks for whatever reason. And the, the beautiful Hawaiian shirts listed. It's a great pattern. I did my keywords. Why isn't it selling? This is why. So we're going to go up here and actually look, I was looking at some Elton John because there's been so much press about um, Elton John running some wonderful auctions on eBay uh, for his foundation. So I was just curious how that was going. And there's a lot of Elton John listed. Um, so let me just go up here and we're going to be looking at, um, let's just do teddy bears. I always like to do teddy bears because it's a nice big category. So we'll do teddy bears. So let's say it's a wonderful teddy bear. And if you don't know, and, and this will be similar to on um, mobile, but see all the, the pills or the little, all this thing across your teddy bear lots, Westport jeans, interesting. I want me to take a look at jeans. Uh, Charlie bears, vintage teddy bears. Let's look at vintage teddy bears. Let's just pretend that what I'm doing is a vintage teddy bear. So I've done a vintage teddy bear. And then look at this, there's 19,000 of them, okay? And so this is why when you're in a large category like vintage teddy bear, but GI Joe is gonna be a large category too, is you're gonna take a look at, um, what's up here. So picks for you under $27. So that's the first thing to look at. What is my price point? So let's say I am going to go under $27. This is not a super expensive teddy bear. So let's do, so let's me know that people are sorting by price. Okay. So let, let's just look at this for a second. It's giving me price options. Hang on a second. I'm just looking at the left-hand side navigation. Okay. Look at this. So price for teddy bears is under 18 or 18 to 35 and over 35. So let's do 18 to 35. So let's me know too, like if I'm thinking maybe of pricing my item at 38, perhaps I want to drop it down to 34 and go into that middle category. Or because it is a totally fabulous teddy bear, I am going to go higher. So we'll look here. And we're doing price and shipping lowest first. So let's say we've got a lot of cute teddy bears here. I'm going to pick this one. Vermont teddy bear because this is a, a well-known one. Let's just do vintage Vermont teddy bear. And I'm just going to copy and paste the title. Because let's say it is a Vermont teddy bear because this is a known brand. Let's see who else is up here. 
So this is the thing. I listed it, and perhaps when I listed it, 18 was good, and now people are good. No, they're all around the same price. So look at this. 1811, free shipping and free returns. And this is where your business policies are going to start to matter. So I've been listed for a long time. It hasn't sold. It's such a cute teddy. Am I willing to do free shipping and returns? Okay. This one's got best offer and free shipping. So clearly free shipping is big on the teddies. Free shipping and returns. So to be competitive, but this guy doesn't have the nice red bow. So that's another thing. Look at yours. Do I have the nice red bow? Then maybe I can definitely probably go a little bit higher, but clearly free shipping and returns. So let's say I'm not free shipping. Let's say I'm not doing free returns. That can be what's stuck because when I went into list, I was competitive. Let's say I was at 1999. Okay. And buyer pays returns. So now I got to take a look at, am I willing to drop my price to be competitive with these. And I would be competitive with the red bows because I'm going to assume I have a red bow, Teddy. If I don't, then yes, I am going to have to drop my price. And then you go, well, Kathy, I'm listing. Let's say I have 20 different teddy bears. Is, you know, you don't want to be going in. It's like going in and checking this, you know, every week. It's like no one's got time to do this, but this is how you do it. So let's say I have five or 10 teddy bears. Maybe I have five Vermont teddy bears, but let's say I have maybe 10 teddy bears. Same with the GI Joes. Maybe I have 10 GI Joes. Think of categories where you have several items that are similar. It could be quilts, uh, vintage paisley sheets. Um, I'm trying to think of something. We're coming up um, onto the fall. So it could be think of Halloween costumes. So let's say I have a Halloween costume, uh, a kid's Halloween costume for a scarecrow. Then what you're going to want to do is whatever the categories are that you're listing. Okay. So let's say I have several vintage teddy bears. See down here, there's a little heart. It says save search. And what you're going to do is you are going to click that. When you do look at this, we'll send you an email when there's something new and then you can turn off email alerts. You do not want to turn off the email alerts and I'm grabbing my phone to see what it looks like on the phone. And so what will happen, and I do this in several categories that I sell in, and I do this for private clients for categories that they sell in. I work with one category that one seller that sells a lot in sporting equipment. So in the categories of sporting equipment and the brands they sell, I'll do saved searches because we are competitive with the way we are listed against the current competition but I don't know who's going to list tonight. I don't know who's going to list tomorrow. And by doing saved searches, I will get an email saying this Teddy got listed. This golf club got listed. This golf bag got listed. Let me just see on the, on the mobile what it is. And I'm just going to type in vintage Teddy bear. Here we go. Vintage Teddy bear. Yes. Right up at the top. Little heart, it's actually easier to see on mobile, save this search. And I encourage you to do that in big categories when you're listing. Because then if all of a sudden somebody comes in and they might only undercut you by a dollar, then you can take a look at it. Great way to deal with that is make sure you've got best offer on your listings. So if somebody undercuts you by a dollar, you're still competitive because somebody can send you an offer. Okay, so question why are my sales slow this summer? Oh, my sales are slow. What happened? What happened? One, one thing, I like my flower. One thing that could happen is someone has come in and they have undercut you by just a few dollars. And for whatever reason, when you listed the items that you have, you did not do best offer on your item, which I do encourage you to do. Okay is to do best offer um, and do that because that can really be helpful. That way you're not having to constantly keep an eye on all your listings. It's like, oh, oh, oh you know, um, that way, if it's just a few dollars underneath it, they can send you an offer. If you don't like best offer, that's just not your style, which is fine. Then with the save searches, you are alerted when something similar is listed and you can go and take a look. So for instance, with that teddy bear was perfect. Everybody was doing free shipping and everybody 
was doing free returns or I shouldn't say everybody, quite a few were doing free returns. So then I want to take a look at, can I do that? Is that going to be doable for me? And again, all of our businesses are different. All of our selling is different, but that's something to take a look at because I want to be competitive. Even on things that are very, very unique. I've told this story um, about, it was mice, it was Swedish mice cheese spreaders. And they were vintage. <laughs> you think like, wow, like I definitely have the market cornered on this one. Well, turns out, no, I didn't. <laughs> there was something very, very similar. But how did I find out? Saved searches. And again, it wasn't exactly, but it was similar. And it was the same company, especially in the summer. People are out yard sailing. They are yard sailing in the summer. So you can absolutely be the only one unique, one of a kind. And sure enough, somebody else has vintage mice, Swedish cheese spreaders. So that's why the safe searches can really, really, really help you. And best offer is your friend. Because again, sometimes just that $1, the $2 or the free shipping or the free returns can make all the difference. And again, when it works for you, because there are going to be times where you go, no, this is just not going to work for me. These other people are going to sell first and then I'm going to sell. But at least you know what's going on, right? Rather than it's like, oh, why are my sales slow? I have a lot more great tips for you. This is top, top, say that one first, top 10 tips to ignite your eBay summer sales. They're specific. I tell you exactly what to do. I explain why it works and this is absolutely free. It's my gift to you. So hop on over to my website. I love to be selling and grab top 10 tips to ignite eBay summer sales. Have a great week, everybody. Bye-bye.